We're in uh, Chandler, Arizona this morning to check in on Waymo and its commercial ride service, Waymo One. It's been in operation about six months now with several hundred uh, regular users of the system hailing Pacifica hybrid minivans outfitted with LIDARs, cameras, radars, all sorts of gear. The technology is getting very good very, very quickly. Could it be ready for large-scale deployment within two, three to five years? Probably so, but a big issue that goes hand in hand with the technology itself is public acceptance. Do people get along with these vehicles? Those are some of the things that Waymo is trying to figure out and has to answer before it can really scale this up to the multi-billion dollar business that it envisions someday. We're on a street where the posted speed limit is 45 miles an hour. We're doing right around that uh, currently. It's very smooth in terms of acceleration. Um, this is a fairly easy street that we're on right now. Traffic's not terribly heavy. We're not doing this during rush hour. For the rider, uh, what we're seeing on the display is both our vehicle, but then everything that the vehicle sensors are seeing, but doing it in kind of a subtle way. Waymo One is using safety drivers all the time. There is also another uh, part of the program called the Waymo Early Rider Program. And in the case of the Early Rider Program, uh, some of those have no uh, driver at the wheel. A few years ago, I started seeing them driving around town and stuff, and so the first thing I did is look it up. I mean, how can you miss one of these things going around? And they had a uh, form online for sign up for the early writer program, and I actually was part of the early writer program at that point. What's the, you know, most surprising thing that's ever happened, or weirdest, or? You know, are, are there any uh, incidents that stand out over the past uh, several months? There was a consistent turn going to my house that was interesting for the vehicle to handle, and it's something, it was something that happened repeatedly okay. uh, a number of times, and kind of watching the cars eventually figure it out and learn how to deal with it, that was pretty cool. We just dealt with a situation that deals with that category of unpredictability, where we had a pedestrian um, waiting to cross the street, signaled for us to go ahead, the van began to go ahead, but then the pedestrian crossed anyway. Um, obviously the vehicle stopped and waited for him to cross, but that's where you get maybe these situations of fuzziness where even properly interpreting what was going on, uh, there was that unpredictable element where the guy just crossed the street anyway. So. We've had collisions uh, where the victim vehicle was the Waymo vehicle. Yeah. Um, not yet aware of any collision that's occurred where the Waymo vehicle was at fault. Obviously, uh, our concern here is public safety and our mission as a police department is to keep our city safe. So as this technology was unfolding, uh, naturally there are a lot of questions, lots of unknowns. So we've been in relatively constant communication or Waymo has with us as, as things have progressed over the years. Beyond the initial shock of not seeing a person in a vehicle, which again, we're getting used to, um, there are protocols that have been established and as a police officer, that was one of the first questions. Who gets the ticket? How do you right. contact whomever? And we were able to work through those uh, um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, with uh, the State Department of uh, Public Safety. And so it's not just a Chandler issue, it's not just a regional issue. We want to make sure as it scales that the entire state is in alignment. You're not an incredibly dense city, so you know it's not San Francisco, it's not Chicago, it's a little more spread out. What makes this, do you think, a, a good place to, to test the Waymo uh, program? Because you know, you've got the good weather, but my guess is most people are driving themselves most places most of the time. Well, from Waymo's point of view, we, we are all of that. We are, they wanted to check out a, suburb, a suburb, but we also have some harsh summer conditions. We get these bizarre looking dust, storm, dust storms that look like something out of a sci-fi movie. But I also think we are a, a city that again, it, that has, and a state that has embraced technology that we've been very laissez-faire with them in terms of not putting on or not desiring to put on a lot of regulations either as a state or as a city so that they can develop this technology very conservatively, very cautiously. The technology could be ready today, but if people aren't comfortable with it, if other drivers aren't comfortable with it, it's not going to work. And this is a company that wants to have a very long life, thinking decades ahead. And all of these problems have to be solved, figured out, answered with what they're doing here in Chandler before they take it elsewhere.